Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Stronger Together channel and to our esteemed guest, Mona Mona, is this week's feature on our Women of Google series. Before we begin, I just wanted to highlight why I'm doing this series in the first place, just to kind of set some context, and then we'll get into learning more about Mona. So the first thing I want to say is that this content is not just clickbait. It is substantive content that's designed to give other women in tech an opportunity to just see themselves in us. A lot of times, so many of us women, myself included, get scared off of applying to these big FANG organizations, the Amazons, Googles, Apples, whatever, because either we don't see women in those roles or we think, oh, why would they hire me? I'm not even going to bother applying. So I just want to cut that myth out that there are women here, we exist. I'd like for the world to see us and just don't be, don't be afraid to apply. Um, put your application in, you've got nothing to lose. And we're going to give you some tips on how to get past recruiters and how to actually land the interviews and, and get be successful going through that process. So we've done two of these so far, and I'll link, I'll link those in the description below, but this one is focused on Mona. She is one of my, she's one of my colleagues on my team. We actually joined Google at very similar times, around two weeks gap between us. So she's very near and dear to my heart. And I'll give the floor over to Mona now to talk a little bit about your position at Google and your area of expertise. Hi, everyone. Hey, Eden. Thank you so much for inviting me to this channel. And I think you're doing a great job doing this. My position at Google, same. I'm also an AIML customer engineer, same like you. <laughs> and my area of expertise is machine learning. And I know we both are really passionate about machine learning. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And I understand that you actually wrote a book as well before you came to Google and you're working on one now. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Eden. I'm really, really excited to talk about the book I have written. So here is the copy of the book. I'm bring it front of the camera. Wait. Oh, it's not, yeah, it's, it's visible now. Yeah. So the book no, is, we'll put the link in the description for everybody. To, yeah. We can, can kind of see it, but yeah. So book woman, but written by a woman with, there are very few women authors around and I feel blessed and fortunate to be one of them. And I also hope I inspire you to become an author. I don't have a PhD. I don't have any data scientist experience, but I was still able to write a book on machine learning, natural language processing. And my book is about how you can apply natural language processing using AWS AI services, no code, low code solution and solve business problems. So that's the book. And that actually goes ties, this book ties back to my career journey and why I've written this. So I would really want to talk about it, that why this book is special to me and how, how it can help women like me, you, you know, to put yourself out in this field. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So how did you, congratulations on your book. And, you know, I know that a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Can you tell us a little bit more about your career progression before you became this amazing esteemed author that works at all these high end tech companies? What was your journey? My journey was very, very normal. Like any woman in technology struggling. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with my bachelor's of technology in computer science from India. And after completing my bachelor's of technology in, in computer science, I was working as a Java developer in India and it was a consulting job. So I, it was more like I'm sitting in, beside a computer and coding for long hours without knowing that how this code is affecting the business. And one day I decided that I want to not just be a coder, I want to know more about technology, not only Java, why, why not? I should learn other technologies. And I decided to come for my master's in United States. I did my master's in computer information systems with big data analytics as my major. However, I was really interested in machine learning and I got introduced to machine learning that time. And I was so fascinated, Eden, I can't even tell you. I was like, I want to become a data scientist. <laughs> I wanted to become a data scientist. It was, it's like a dream job for most of the people. Yeah, I get the allure. Obviously. Yeah, it's and I did try. I did try. It. it was not easy for me. I did try. I applied for many data science positions. However, since I do not have a PhD, I was not eligible even 
to qualify for those positions. So it's very hard to get into machine learning and because they expect PhD, five years plus experience, and I had nothing, but I was passionate. Right. However, I had this AWS certification in my resume and I was picked for that role. And I got into the AWS, <laughs> Amazon Web Services solution architect role. And gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I was gonna ask how you made that transition. I hear a lot of women saying that they're developers, but they want to make the transition to data science and they're experience the same struggle that that you're having. So would you recommend getting the cloud certifications, whether it be AWS or GCP or whatever? Definitely. I think that that actually determined what I am today. You know, if I would not had those certification, I would not have come to Google and I would not have got AWS role. And that is why I'm, my next book is about how you can pass Google Cloud machine learning certification. So I'm building an official guide to help all of all of you to get get to your do your dream role to your dream jobs and have a very successful career ahead. Perfect. Yeah, and highly recommend anything that Mana is authoring. I, I'm sure it'll be super helpful to people and and just help this community of women in tech grow. That's so good to hear. I'm so glad that you had some insight there. And, and in specifically, you're on the F1 visa. Have you met any challenges in terms of yeah, trying to get through the hiring pool with that? I, I think that's a great question. So I was, I, I was on F1 visa, student visa, and uh, I applied to uh, maybe made, made 1500 jobs and I was getting rejections every day because 90% of the organizations do not sponsor your H1B or green card. So I had very, very limited choices, either get picked by big organizations like Google, Microsoft, or go back home in, in 60 days if I don't get a job. Right. So I was really, really stressed. And I that's why I did all the certifications in the world. Currently, I have 14 certifications. So I was like, I have to set my resume apart. Like, why would somebody hire me? And what is different I'm doing? And, and that was just my own intuition. Nobody told me to do that. It was like, let me get everything <laughs> in my resume. And and second thing I did was I also did a lot of projects and put it on. So I did a lot of machine learning projects. I participated in Kaggle competitions to show yeah. that I, I actually understand and I'm passionate about it. And and somebody, so like God listens when you put so much hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Improving it. I think that we've we've heard this through a couple of other of, of other people on this interviewing panel that you have to prove your expertise. You cannot just put words on your resume and expect people to to believe you. Proving it goes a long way is what I'm hearing you, you say there. And, and I've seen other people be successful using that, that method. So I'm so glad that you were able to highlight that for us. So can you tell us a little bit about how you decided to apply to Google coming from AWS? That's a great question. Actually, I was really happy working at AWS and AWS made me what I'm today, this book, which I wrote is, is, is my four years of working at AWS. And I got into machine learning because of AWS, because I got the opportunity to deep dive into machine learning. And I wrote multiple blogs. I did a research paper and then this book. So one day some recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn about this potential opportunity in Google. And I know that Google is best in AI. And I really wanted to learn that okay now I've, I've learned what amazon has to offer me amazon cloud and their ml technologies it's time to learn more about google and that is why i was like okay yeah let's try it try try something new okay. now that's how it happened cool no i think yeah that's uh, a lot of that rings true for me as well google is the top for AI ml it's a great place to come if you're interested in that that field. Okay, so we'll go over your LinkedIn profile in just a second, but can you tell us a little bit about what you did to prepare for your interview until we get before we get there? Yeah. I think I overdid for my interview. <laughs> I should have not done that much preparation. That did not work in my favor. And I would also recommend all of you not to overwork for your interview. So I went actually, so Google to apply to this role, you just letting you know, you do not need a lot of Google cloud expertise. You do not need to know all the Google cloud terminologies. Don't, don't worry about all of that. Even if you know one cloud technology and you can answer the questions, you will be good. So don't repeat my mistake of over preparing for interview and don't do that. 
So yeah. what I did, I went to, I took a Google Cloud course from Coursera and it was a short course to understand how AWS technologies maps to Google's technology, like one-to-one -one mapping, like your S3 is cloud storage, BigQuery, it is Redshift. So I created a mental map. And then for the presentation round, I actually went and gave the demo, which I should not have given. I really regret it. So mm -hmm. just focus on what they are asking you. Do not overkill it with architecture and technology be high level they expect you to be high level and understand the value of the business value of the technology rather than being very very technical for the interview so that's the one advice i would give gotcha did you have any advice for how you prep for the soft skills part of the of the interview process i looked into some videos on youtube there's one video on googliness which helped and there is, and, and those were all Google resources shared by the recruiter. Yeah. So I just, I just went through those leadership Googliness. And I also Googled another way you can look is I always Google for interview questions in Glassdoor. And sometimes you find the exact questions and that's how pre I prepared for Amazon interview too. Uh, perfect. Yeah, that's the great thing with these big companies is that yeah. there are so many people who have interviewed that they just put a lot they, of them. Just yeah. always check the role you're interviewing for in Glassdoor. You might find some questions which is relevant and focus on that. I, I couldn't find a lot. I'll be honest, Eden. I couldn't find a lot for this role because it's a very niche role. But all the videos helped and also being high level in your presentation and uh, for role related knowledge, I think general cloud awareness is more than enough. What is SaaS? What is infrastructure as a service? What is software as a service? Those type of yeah, of value course. of cloud. Yeah, being able to speak to the value of cloud is right. That was very important. They yep. kind of have done that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. All right, so let's get into your LinkedIn you profile should. because that is actually how Mona said that she got her recruiter's attention. But before we've done resume reviews, and that's because. Farah and I got hired based on our resumes, but that's not the case with Mona. So that's why we're going over her LinkedIn profile here. <clears throat> All righty. So, okay, so this is good. All right, so Mona, I like how you put your, your not just your position up here under your name, but also some, some things that make you special that recruiters can kind of be impressed by you're an author you're a speaker you know not everybody has those credentials and then this is cool you've put some hashtags here as well metadata is just everything isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> making your your profile searchable oh that's really cool i don't know that i've seen the the hashtags on here yeah that's, and i see you've got 500 plus connections so that as i understand it is the minimum if you don't have at least 500 connections, I understand that the search algorithms kind of push you down. So that's definitely something I see a lot of students having to put a lot of effort into before they start interviewing. What else did you did you want to call out here? Yeah, I want to see the featured section was was definitely people look into the featured section, my all the publications, my speaking sessions, all the resources I have created, my reinvent sessions, all of this is, is here. So Anyone can go and check check out my work live. Any recruiter or any hiring manager can come here and see what how how I'm good in the sales role. So that's that's all my resources, all my blog publications. Like I have published uh, 17 blogs together. So you can find all the links here. I I mean generally people will create their own website, but I use LinkedIn for like one page. And another thing I do, I put all my skills in in the career summary section. So all my skills and that that helps match the algorithm. So if anyone is looking for Java, yeah. so you see all the skills, all whatever skills I have, you will find in the career summary section itself. And oh, all this is page. awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, I bet this helps the algorithms pick you up yeah. more so than just, you know, you probably have them in your skills section too, right? I think the summary part is more picked than this. I have it in my skills also, but that summary, yeah. if you add all your skills in the summary, that gets picked faster. Yeah. It's just like doubling up. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. The more data you can put on your LinkedIn profile, the better. I mean, 
yep. this list looks i love how you've just loaded this up with content that's how you get through these algorithms give yeah. them something because when i was uh, when i was searching for my first job after my masters i actually used to update my even i got my job through linkedin to the aws job app also through linkedin so and linkedin is my go-to thing for finding jobs so what did you do so your your first kind of main big tech role was at aws mm -hmm. correct yes correct. what did your linkedin profile look like before that what what advice would you give to students who are maybe just out of school and maybe they don't have all of these fancy yeah. certifications yeah I, I even even if so i got my first aws job also through linkedin so i didn't have the aws but i still have all, the career summary i haven't changed till now it's still same it's my post school era oh perfect yeah so what you see on the top all the skills was when i was looking for a job and i applied for 1500 positions so <laughs> i am i haven't updated my linkedin since then except for the new new things i have done like the speaking sessions the book publications the content i have been creating but if you just see the career summary and just put your skills that will help help you get a job Perfect. And I will link Mona's LinkedIn profile in the, the comments below so you guys can look at it more in detail and even feel free, copy, paste, edit it for your own use. I and mean, and another, I have one another trick I want to share with all. I literally used to add all the recruiters in the area. I used to add them. <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> so that was another trick I use I used to get a job. Wow. Okay. So that was going to be my last question here was any advice that you would give to other women thinking to apply to Google or really all the Fang companies? What advice? Anything else additional you feel like would help be helpful? I, I can. I can. I can. That's a great question, Eden. And I can say that. So there are two types of roles in these organizations. One is very very tech and science focused, like a software development engineer roles. Those are harder to crack. I'll be very, very honest. Those are hard, harder to crack. But if you are still wanting to make a career in these big companies, look for cloud roles because cloud is a new technology. 2004 is when cloud was first launched by AWS. And now Google was third in the race and Microsoft has its own cloud. So I would recommend get something out of the box, get something trending and apply to roles which are new. And, and advantage is that the interviews are not very technical, extremely technical. You don't have to go through lead code challenges and women really get scared of lead code challenges. And I, I do, I'm, I'm, I was a developer myself. I do, I do, I hate solving algorithms. <laughs> uh, I mean, I love solving it mentally, but not for a coding interview when you have like 30 minutes to solve five algorithms. Yes, high pressure. Yeah. That's really stressful, Eden. Yeah. And that is one thing which limits women because they think it is hard and they really don't know their options. Hmm. Hmm. So if you look for cloud roles, you have a lot of options and the interviews does not scare you. They look for more, more, more behavioral soft skills. Yeah. And technical, even if you don't have technical skills, do not worry. You can learn on the fly on the job. There is yeah. a lot of learning opportunities. Even if you don't have certification, I would recommend you still go ahead and apply. If you have some kind of coding skills in your resume, like Python, Java, that those are like any kind of coding skills you have. And any kind of aptitude you have for technology. Yeah, yeah. I think the general rule of thumb that Google recommends is if you can meet 70% of the preferred or required, I don't remember, 70% mm -hmm. of, the, of the qualifications for the job, go ahead and, and apply. Yep. Look for cloud roles because I think they are not as hard as software development engine, engineer roles. Perfect. I, I hadn't heard that advice, but that definitely makes a lot of sense. So I'm glad that you highlighted that for people. Well, Mona, thank you so much for your time today. I know that your time is precious and thank you so much for giving us just a few minutes of your time so that, to delve into your experience and your takeaways here. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to reading your book and engaging with you. Thanks, Eden. It's my pleasure. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, no problem. All right. See you later, Mona. Bye.